Hello, and thanks for joining us today on RPV City Talk. I'm Maria Sorreo. I am joined today by our Mayor David Bradley, and we are at one of the city's historic locations, Battery Bunker. Mayor, welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here on this beautiful day out here at Battery uh, Barnes Bunker. Yes. Um, out at the foot of the Civic Center. Um, you know, it can't be another beautiful day in Palos Verdes without doing another city talk. That's right. And we can show the viewers a little bit of history at the same time, which is always fun. Absolutely. This is uh, a, a really historic site, part of the uh, old Nike base, all part of the uh, World War II uh, coastal defense bases. Yes. Uh, just, you know, a lot of history. Have you been inside of this bunker? I have. Okay. And it is amazing. It goes on and on and on. Uh, we're working with the U.S. Coast Guard to get this uh, site accessed yes. and get this turned over to the city. If you look at this site, it is actually encompassed all the way around by city property. So we're right. looking to uh, incorporate this into the new Civic Center design, That's right. which is just a stunning piece of property and, and a stunning view here in uh, Rancho Palos Verdes. Absolutely. And speaking of a stunning event, the 4th of July this year, Mayor, went out. It, it, it was all out. Over 3,000 people were here, and um, it was just an amazing day. It was really exciting. The fact that folks were lined up before we opened the gates to yes. get in. Over 3,000 folks yeah. came out for it. You can see that the demand was there to get back out in the community. Um, I think uh, from the children's games to adults uh, to the food trucks, I think it was uh an amazing uh, day within the city, and I think everyone had a great time. They did, but they were really also there for the big pie-eating contest. Now, Mayor, did you see the video of that yet? I know nothing of a pie-eating contest. There are no pictures of me participating in such a thing. I have no idea what you're talking about. Let's take a look. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Go! Oh, Crookshank takes a quick lead. Crookshank takes a demanding lead. You're good, John. Oh. Wow! Wow! He defends the belt. Wow! Good job, Councilman. Wow. Okay. Unfortunately, I think. Councilman Cruchank may have gotten me by a little bit there, but he was, he's been practicing. I don't think he's eaten for the last month. First of all, not only that, okay, he got a little bit of a jump, but he scared everybody with that, okay? I mean, it was, it was crazy. He... <laughs> Just a little bit crazy. Yeah, um, but I want to uh, congratulate uh, Councilman Krushank in all seriousness. He is good at it. It's an all good fun, but in three years in a row, he has beat me in the annual pie eating contest. Um, I'm going to take him on again next year. You and, have to. And, and, and I hope to turn the tide next year. But once again, Councilman Krushank, congratulations on a uh, hard fought battle and uh and you did well, sir. You know what? I do have to say that some of the residents said they enjoyed the fun and the f uh, fun that you both had together. So that, that's good because <laughs> usually everything is serious all the time. And sometimes you have to enjoy yourself. Well, the first time we did it was three years ago. That's and it right. was in, in the height of the pandemic. That's right. Um, Councilman Krushank was mayor at the time. And that was when we did the first piloting contest. We actually just did it, the two of us, behind right, uh, City Hall. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and, you know, I think it's a tradition. I think it's all in good fun. Uh, this year, we were able to have more in the community come out and do the pie eating contest after us. That's right. So the kids got in there. Um, I think they had a great time he after uh, seeing Councilman Krushank and myself make complete fools of ourselves. <laughs> but it's all in good fun, and it was a wonderful day uh, on for, for the 4th of July. It really was. What a way to kick off the summer, of course, here in Rancho Palos Verdes. Um, some of the items that you were talking about this month at the city council meeting, one of them um, was the wildlife detection system. Um, I know that in an effort to prevent the wildfires, the city council is considering the installation of the wildlife detection camera systems. Tell us about the cameras and the options that were just presented to council at the June meeting. Sure. So uh, Pano AI or Pano uh, Artificial Intelligence is a company that's out there in the marketplace that uh, came to us, they and another vendor, with some opportunities to put some automated wildfire detection systems within the city. Uh, this is a system that would uh, monitor our hills and canyons 24-7. Um, it has an AI program running in the background that looks for smoke detection and then it uh, uh, alerts first responders to be able to get a jump on things um, 
in advance of somebody calling in. So it's like a uh, smoke watcher out there 24-7 looking day and night to protect the city. We at the last city council meeting looked at the uh, staff report and we've asked uh, staff to go get a proposal from Pano AI, which was the vendor of choice in the uh, quotes that we got. But that should help us reduce the danger for wildfires within the city. Uh, we're also working with um, the insurance commissioner to see if we can get this incorporated into insurance rate reductions That's within great. the city. Councilman Cruikshank did some back of the envelope math and uh, for what we would pay be paying um, it's about $14 a year per resident and if we can help uh, our residents get a $100 uh, reduction in their annual homeowners insurance right. it would be certainly money well spent. Uh, we're also looking at various uh, grants um, from state and federal agencies to help offset the cost of putting in this camera system. Sounds like a win-win for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. It's exciting um, and then we're also working with the other three peninsula cities uh, to see if they want to join us and we make it a peninsula-wide system um, all interactive because a fire in one city doesn't stop at the border no. it moves into the next city absolutely. so um, all of Palos Verdes um, is in this together absolutely uh, the next item was a landslide complex update from wildfires to landslides uh, the city council received an update on the various projects associated with the city's landslide complex tell us a little bit more and how projects are coming sure. along. Mm -hmm. So we um, we're doing uh, multiple portions of uh, the landslide uh, project. We have uh, retained a new project manager to help manage all the different phases of the landslide remediation. Uh, one of the things that we've just kicked off, in fact, when I was coming over here today, um, I went by the surveyors that are out on PV Drive um, West that were um, putting in the marker. So we're doing a high fidelity 3D mapping survey of the landslide area to be able to look at change and look at where the areas are moving the most and moving the least and uh, determine where we need to concentrate to be able to stabilize the land there. Other thing that we're doing is we're proceeding with the environmental impact report okay. uh, for the mitigation um, and that's the three-phase project of uh, uh, hydro augers, uh, filling in uh, the crevices and cracks, and also putting in retention ponds to try to uh, retard the water uh, from seeping into the groundwater and continuing to uh, lubricate that slip plane. We're also looking at PV Drive South resurfacing. So we're looking at trying to do a different type of material as opposed to just normal asphalt, which is relatively prone to cracking. We're looking at a rubberized roadbed to be able to be more flexible. It's it's a little bit more expensive up front, but we're looking to see if we can mitigate the amount of times that we have to resurface it. So it would be a cost savers in the long run um, and a win-win. We're looking at the improvements to Altamira Canyon as well as uh, what to do with the Alec Abalone Cove sanitary sewer system that was put in over 30 years ago and that system is, uh, is aging and we're trying right. to determine what the um, sewer district there, uh, what the best way is to go forward. But all those parts of the project together are all trying to uh, stabilize Portuguese Bend. And we know that that land is just constantly moving, so it's a big job. It's a huge job, and different parts are moving at different rates, and we're really trying to get a handle of it. And the first thing is to get some data on what is moving the faster, So, and that's why we're doing the uh, the 3D mapping. Very good. Now, the Ladera Linda Community Park has the live feed. Tell us about the time-lapsed video, which is documenting the construction. So you can go to the RPV City website and uh, look at the uh, the uh, current webcam there, which is looking down at the park construction. Yep. It is snapping a photo every 60 seconds. Um, we're going to take those uh, time-lapse photos and turn it into the uh, construction of Ladera Linda. So that'll take the 13-month uh, project and condense it down into a couple minutes. And you'll be able to see from the old somewhat dilapidated uh, Ladera Linda School um, and the destruction all the way through the uh, recreation and the metamorphosis of the uh, of the project into the new Ladera Linda Community uh, Park. Which is always so exciting I think when we see the time lapse of anything just from beginning to end. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it is really the creation of a butterfly uh, from a caterpillar. Yeah, so that's true. it's an exciting project uh, so go check it out on the yeah. city website and you can see what's going on. If you haven't had an opportunity 
opportunity to drive by. Absolutely. Uh, the next item was the Neighborhood Beautification Project Update. Roan Road com was completed, and um, the uh, let's see here, the beautification is well underway. What's the purpose of this program? Um, tell us about recent Roan Road and how the community can participate, Mayor. So this beautification project is a grant that the city is giving the different uh, micro communities out there and it's to help improve the look and feel of the entrance monuments to each one of these uh, communities. The Rhone Road community was one that applied for the grant. It's a sharing between the uh, community that community association and the city and uh, the Rhone Road one went in, uh, redid all the landscaping to the entrance of that area, uh, put in um, uh, native habitat or native plants uh, that are low water um, and really change the tenor. So off of PV Drive East, as you drive down PV Drive East, on the right hand side, the Roan Road entrance now has been completely redone. This is just the first of many of the of the areas that are going to be done um, uh, over the next year as uh, the different uh, communities uh, improve the entrances to their uh, their neighborhoods. And you've already done several around the uh, around Rancho Palos Verdes. Yeah. Yep, that are already completed as well. And I know that coming up soon, um, we're talking about new city signs and the council voted on plans to install new signs at the city's entrances and monuments just in time for the RP RPV's 50th anniversary countdown and the renaming of the Civic Center for a founder, Ken Dida. Very exciting. We're looking forward to that. So um, the city council decided that it's time to refresh uh, the entrance monuments to the city and yes. our park signs. Um, our park signs right now, if you go out to our uh, our different parks within the city, uh, some of them have a different font, some of them have a different look. Um, so as we enter our 49th year and on the precipice of our 50th celebration, we wanted to look at a new sign standard. So uh, not all of the city entrance monuments will be replaced at the same time. Uh, they're going to be replaced as they become um, old and um and uh, need maintenance yes. will go to the new standard. The parks will have all new signage, all consistent, um, which is a much more modern feel, but still has the uh, the look and feel of Rancho Palos Verdes. So I think the new sign standard is going to be is going to be really nice. Going to draw everything together and give us a new uh, a new look and feel. How do you sort of decide on that look? We had a great design firm uh, give us some options, okay. and uh, uh, the city council um, went back and forth on what we wanted to see. I think we came in with a, a great compromise uh, that's really going to enhance uh, the, the look and feel of the city. That's exciting for sure. Um, I know Silver Spur Street Rehab is also um, on the docket. It's always so vital to keep our streets up to date, and the city's been looking to allocate an additional appropriation to rehabilitate portions of Silver Spur Road South. Yep. just south of Hawthorne um, in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes and it's a joint project led by the city of Rolling Hills Estates. Tell us a little bit more about that. So like anything, you know, streets don't stop at the edge of the city. <laughs> right. And so often cities do not coordinate with their neighbors. So you'll see a street get repaired and then it will stop. And it, it's almost like it went off a cliff. Um, we had the opportunity to work with one of our sister cities, uh, Rolling Hills Estates to get a joint project. We're contributing funds to Rolling Hills Estates to be able to do one continuous project that will uh, resurface all of um, Silver Spur um, by the Peninsula High School to make sure that it has, the, um, you know, it's all current. So it doesn't look like, you know, one city's done something and right. the other city is falling behind. Um, so it's really neat when you can collaborate with your neighbor. How long does that usually take? to complete a project like that? Uh, we will be starting that project within the next four to six weeks. Oh. And the project is scheduled to be completed by the time school starts oh, in the fall. Oh, pretty so soon. We want to make sure that we're not resurfacing that street yes. <laughs> when, when the kids are coming back to Peninsula High. That's just not a good time yeah, to be very resurfacing a street. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. And we had just talked about things to do in the summer. And of course, for the residents, um, we want to remind everybody about the concerts in the park. Park. There's going to be two more, yep. one on July 30th um, from 4 to 6, the Mighty Cash 
Cats, which Cash is Cats, yes. Johnny Cash, and uh, uh, August 27th from 4 to 6, Country Vision, which is a yep. country band. Um, there's also food trucks and food and beer, beverages, yep. all kinds of things. So we invite everybody to bring a blanket and hang out for the afternoon. Bring a blanket, bring a chair. Um, it's a follow-on to the concert we had for 4th of July, which, yeah. which was a Fleetwood Mac tribute band. They were great. They played all of the hits. Yeah, they were so um, It great. was really amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of people really got into it. I think some of the younger kids that may not have been um, familiar with Fleetwood Mac got yes. exposed to some Fleetwood Mac. Right. Uh, the singers were fantastic. Uh, you would have thought that Stevie Nicks was actually there. Yes. Um, so it was really, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. So, like you said, Johnny Cash tribute band mm -hmm. is next, and after that is a uh, country band uh, playing all the hits. So come on out. Um, it's a phenomenal venue to uh, bring a beach chair, bring a blanket. Um, there'll be, as you said, food trucks yeah. and uh, lots to do. And lots to do. You know, we often talk about the fact that the city hosts so many of these events. Why is that important for the city to do that, Mayor? Well, in a city like Rancho Palos Verdes, it is relatively spread out. We're geographically just diverse. We're not in like a uh, 10 square block uh, area to bring people together to this civic center, to get a sense of community, to be able to see your neighbors, uh, understand what's going on within the community, I think can't be understated how important it is. So this is just a way for us to bring the community together, mm -hmm. uh, give the kids and parents something to do outdoors, take advantage of the beautiful nature that we have, especially here at the Civic Center with a view that is just unsurpassed. Yeah, amazing. Um, and as we go forward with the new Civic Center, mm -hmm. um, it's gonna even get better. Absolutely, and we want to remind everyone that starting in September, we're kicking off a year-long birthday party for the city. Yep. It's going to be exciting, and um, every month there's going to be a special event. The first one, so amazing, uh, the renaming of the Civic Center, Center to call it the Ken Dida Civic Center, of course, after our legendary councilman and city founder. Tell us more about the activities for the 50th. So we're going to be kicking it off, as you said, with the renaming and rededication of the Civic Center here um, to uh, honor Ken Dida. Yeah. We had to make a special um, a resolution within the city council to uh, waive one of our rules, which is not to name anything after a currently serving politician. Right. But in this case, with uh, Councilman Ken Dida serving on the city council 40 year, 49 years That's after amazing. he helped found the city and sat on the city council in year one, it just seemed like the right thing to do. Uh, when we can honor a founding father who has literally dedicated his life to the city. That's right. Um, with 49 years of service, not all continuous, but he has been involved for all 50 years that the city has been uh, uh, incorporated. It, it, it just seemed like the right thing to do. And we have the opportunity to honor him in his life with him there, um, I don't think it could be a more uh, appropriate thing to do. I think he'll always be involved in the city somehow. Absolutely. Absolutely, 100% for sure. Now, I know you had some special announcements and people this week at the meeting. Tell us about that. Yeah, so, you know, it always amazes me, um, the uh, talent and, um, and uh, accomplishments of some of our residents. Yes. So Hugo came in to, uh, to the city council and was able to, uh, this is a 10 year old. Right. Who's a virtuoso violin player. Um, he played the entire first movement of a box sonata from memory. Um, I have a hard time remembering what I had for breakfast and he was able to play an entire box sonata from memory as a 10 year old. Um, I was sitting behind him and this is just an amazing kid. You can see how much he practices on the neck of his violin on the back of it because I was sitting behind him. I could see that he has worn off all the varnish on the <sighs> back side of the neck of the violin wow. from practicing. He practices two to five hours a day. That is dedication. As a 
ten year old. Yes. But he also has time to be a student. Yes. He has friends. He goes out and and, and plays uh, with Pokemon cards. Um, just a really neat uh, young man. Um, so we're hoping that we can incorporate him into the uh, the celebrations for our fiftieth anniversary and get him to regale us with another. Uh, concert and another sonata uh, as we go forward. Several things that are being mayor are just so fun to do. The mayor's honoree mm -hmm. is always fun to talk to some of these people, to see what they've done for the community, both local as well as at large. It's amazing. Um, it, it, it's amazing, the accomplishments. Very good. Anything else you wanted to mention? No, I... I think that, you know, things are really moving forward. As we come out of COVID, we're able to open up. We had Whale of a Day, then we had Fourth yep. of July. Um, you know, we're going to be kicking off the 50th year celebration here mm -hmm. in September right. with the renaming. Um, I think everything is really, really going well for the city. Um, the finances of the city are going well. Um, our businesses are doing well. If, come back out of COVID uh, shutdown. So Terranea is, uh, is uh, back operating almost at full capacity. Um, so I think things are looking up things in Rancho Palos Verdes. That's right. All right, Mayor, thank you so much for being with us. And th thank all of you for watching as well. And we are actually going to end the show with some of the music from that young man. So it'll be a, it'll be a treat for Fantastic. us. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you next time.